Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and to my messy workbench. Which one of that part is? I don't know. Anyway, it's a new gun video. I haven't done one of these for oh, been a while. I think it's been um, yeah, it's been a year now since I did a gun video. The last gun video I did was uh, the Walter Paris. But these came into stock not that long ago, my local gun store. I wanted this gun since I first seen them, uh, probably six, seven, maybe eight years ago. And I've only ever, ever seen them in stock once, and but it wasn't in the caliber I wanted. And it just so happens that the gun store I got it from had all three calibers that came, came in, which is the 177, 22, and the 25. This is 25 caliber. It is a Hot Sun Model 95 with the Vortex piston in it. What a nice rifle. I was missing out all, all those years without having it. This is just a, an overview of the gun, just a, a look at it. I know there's lots of videos on YouTube about this gun. Lots of videos. But this is an updated model. I don't know when it was made. I can't find any information on it. I messaged Hotson two days ago to find out the information on when, for all the, the build and release dates that these guns had and the mo up to the most recent. Because the Hotson Model 95, all the older ones have, uh, says Mod 95 Vortex. I think it says Vortex. Stamped into the, the wood on into the stock on both sides. This doesn't have it on either side. Which to say, this the stock is the Turkish Walnut. And man, what a nice stock this is. It's super slim. The gun weighs about 6.8 pounds. And I don't think I'm putting a scope on it. It shoots fantastic the way it is. It's got a 17 inch barrel, fiber optic front and rear sights, Fully adjustable for windows and elevation rear sight with the 11 millimeter to 20 millimeter weaver scope rail on top with the scope stop. <clears throat> A revised uh, push pull resettable safety. I like that safety a lot better than the other hot suns. My other two hot suns have the, it's kind of like the wheel, the, the, it's flimsy and cheap feeling. This is actually pretty solid. And like I said, it's resettable. And of course comes with the, the famous record trigger. Though I'm finding that the record trigger, being spoiled with having the the Virau HW97K and the Walter Paris, both of those triggers is absolutely fantastic. But the record trigger being the absolute best in my opinion. Next to the TX200, which is just a revamped record trigger. This one, I've, I've got it adjusted and it's... Like most of the videos say, I don't have a trigger pull gauge. This one is about 5 pounds. And I guess it'll work in over time. I've got it adjusted as much as I can for, for pull weight. There's, there's, I've got to where there's just a, a touch of travel in the trigger. If you notice, this has the the regular not muzzle brake because it's not a muzzle brake cocking aid. It doesn't have the QE because I'm in Canada and you can't have the QE system here. Not that I'm not not that it matters anyway because I don't want one. Don't really care about moderators and silencers. It's got you know just a basic rubber butt plate butt pad. The SAS shock system. Whatever that is, a lot of people think it's just a recoil pad, but it's it's more than that. It's uh, the cocking arm has a bend in it, and what and does whatever it does. I have no idea. I'll switch it around here. I'll go over the gun in a minute. I'll pick the camera up. Or my phone, rather. Actually, I can set it in here. 
Yeah, I don't know why they print all this information on top of the compression tube because it, it, it doesn't matter. We know it's Vortex, or it's nice to have the Vortex so you know what it is and the model number. But it doesn't need the SAS and the Quattro trigger, especially the Quattro trigger. It doesn't need that on there. Apparently I found out yesterday the barrels are, are made in Germany for, for these guns. I always thought that everything was made in Turkey. And apparently the barrels are precision made in, in in Germany for them. Which is cool. Everything I don't like, well one thing I don't like about it is this stock screw here. It's flush right here at the top, but stick it protruding out at the bottom. And it's sharp. I may have to remove it and go over with a Dremel and then reboot it. But like I said, I don't know if I'm going to put scope on it and I've got a few scopes here. But it's rated, the older models are, or were rated for up to 650 feet per second with lead pellets. These newer ones, Hot Sun updated their website again and these ones are up to 700 feet per second, which that means they're uh, between a 24 and a 25 foot pound gun in 25 caliber. Maybe a 20, uh, 800 feet per second in, in 22 and uh, I think it was 960 for 177. And I think the 22 is a 20 pound gun and the 177 is like 18. Yeah, but I was really, really happy about getting this model. Because apparently my... Sub that's a, the store I deal with. Uh, I've gotten two of my two of the three hot suns I own now from him, and he was the only he is the only place in Canada now that actually carries hot sun brake barrels. They're getting harder and harder to find, well, at least in Canada anyway. What a nice rifle, nice check ring. It doesn't make any sense. Like this, I guess this spot here was left blank or, or designed that way so they could put the model number right there and looking at this stock I looked at it last night all the way down from the tip to the butt there are all these fine lines in the ground it almost looks like a flamed walnut which would really really cool because I, I think I might put it's got a satin finish on it, which I'm not really, I really don't care for satin finishes. So I might do one or two coats of true oil on it, just let it dry and we'll see if that brings out the green. Speaking of that, this is about this gun, but I just, this, this stock is currently curing. This is the Walter Parrish stock. It had a reddish tinge to it. And I didn't like that reddish tinge, so I got the True Royal out, and I, I actually stained, put a one coat of stain on it, walnut stain, and then did uh, nine coats of True Royal. It turned out fantastic, really nice. It's been sitting down here on my coat hanger for a week today, a week tonight. So it, it, it'll be ready to go in one or two days, or at least I feel that it'll, it, it'll be hard enough. Then I gotta buff it and polish it, but that's the Walter Paris. But see, at least this, the Walter Paris, it's got the. I don't know if you can see that. No, it's out of frame. But anyway, it doesn't matter. The, the Walter Paris has the Walter logo and stamped into the stock. This is just an overview video. This is not about shooting or anything like that. I may do a shooting video after. I keep going over it because I keep finding dust or whatever on it because it's the thing was just caked in oil when I got it, which is good. It's a good thing. But the, I noticed there's a few spots at the back of the compression tube where and the, the Weaver 11 millimeter rail there that have uh, some of the bluing missing. So I guess when they spot welded or tack welded the the scope mount on it that they removed some of the bluing or, or the heat did so I guess I gotta clean that spot up and maybe go over it with some cold blue <coughs> yeah I got another gun coming this week so I'll have another video two videos in a year wow
Well, this year, anyway, this is my first video of 2020. I'll do a video for the Walter Paris after I get it done. Because I removed that video that I had up. Uh, I didn't think it was that great of a video, so I just removed it. Took it down. So, yeah, it's the problem. I, I really don't have a whole lot of space or room to do proper reviews for these guns. At least the gun is, is well lit, because I got some lighting two lights two extra lights here a light above and another light right here plus two lights i got on, on either side i end my light here i wish i had a setup where i could stand in front of the camera and show everybody the details but like i said this this one this gun's been out for like eight years maybe even longer and everybody and their brother has done reviews of this gun in the spring piston version and the vortex piston version and i do believe if i'm if i'm correct that the the, the vortex piston in this one uh can be recharged it's got the the input for for a compressor for yeah a compressor if you didn't know that some of the, the hots on vortex pistons can be recharged and they can the pressure can be upped in them so, like I said, this gun's rated for up to 700 feet per second. If I could uh, back, or hot sun, uh, I'm getting lost in my, getting lost and tripping over my words here. Hot sun puts the, the, the pistons in these that they're, uh, I guess that's how they can, they can, can, it's the same piston they put in, in their, the 125, 135 series. But they can increase the pressure inside the, the piston. So it gives you the output, whereas, because my 125th is rated up up to 34 foot-pounds, where it was only 30 foot-pounds before. But then again, that gun doesn't have the, have the Vortex piston, it's got, it's got a spring piston in it, and it's, it gets 34 foot-pounds, that gun. I've tested it already. But yeah, you can up the pressure inside the piston, so I could potentially make this gun... A 30 foot, foot pound or a 34 foot pound if I wanted to but I don't know if I really want to because it, it's it's uh, what the hell did I say 42 44 foot pounds to the cock it as it is it's okay it's not it's not tough or anything I can cock it with one arm whereas the 125 th I had I need two arms because I'm getting old to, to, to cock the thing but this one's only one one arm just leave the way it is. It, it's good enough for small game hunting, rabbit, whatever, out to 40, 50 yards, I would guess, if you're a good enough shot with it, with open sights. That's why I said, I don't, I don't, every air rifle I own has a scope on it. And I've got five other scopes in, in my room over here that, that are just sitting in their boxes they were bought, and that's, they haven't moved yet. They haven't, they haven't gone to a gun. So I could put a scope of my choosing on this gun but I, re I really like the lines of it I love the stock on it and I, it's got that classic sporter look to it I really wish I could remove this this cocking it because I can't stand these bulgy things on and the only way to remove it is to cut it off in pieces and the problem with that is this piece is molded over top of uh, the barrel has steel fins. I think they're they're half circle all the way around the barrel, all the way down at the end here. So you can't remove it. You can't pull it off. It's got. Be, I've seen a video of a guy cutting cutting one off, and he got pissed right off when he found out all those fins are underneath. Because <coughs> then the work began. How do you get the fins off? That are molded in, or that are cast into the barrel. Well, they could they could have even been welded on, but even still, you would need a grinder to get them off. Cut them off. Yeah, so I'll go over the gun here with the camera. Sorry for the noise in the background. My, I'm doing a load of laundry. I might as well do a load of laundry down here while I'm down here. Okay. Pull up the tripod here.
you look at the check ring, really nice check ring on it. I don't know if we can see those lines or not. It's evident right, right around here, if you can see them. It looks like flamed walnut. And right there. Mod 95 and SAS and Quattro Trigger and Mickey Mouse's ears. And I have a people said, why did, I got two emails today and said, why did you get another 25 caliber hot sun? Why not? I've got th the three power levels of brake barrels of hot sun now. The 24 foot pound. Actually, this is only supposed to be, the original one was like 17 or 18 foot pounds. But this one's up to 24 foot pounds. And my 105X is a 25 foot pound gun. And my 125 is a 34 foot pound. 34 foot pound. Not that that matters to a lot of people. The foot pound, it just means you can shoot out a little bit further. It's got higher velocity. But I'm going to chronograph this gun and see what it does. And that doesn't really matter. I don't care. It shoots good. That's all I know. I may do a shooting test or shooting video for it later. But I can tell you this, doing a sound meter test with my sound meter, this gun is not backyard friendly. I bet you this gun right now is probably sitting at between 98 and 105 decibels. It's loud. When everybody said on the internet that, or on YouTube that it was quiet, it was quiet air rifle. Yeah. No, it ain't. And I cleaned the barrel. I ran my snake through it five times through the barrel five times one way and then five times the other way made sure it was clean and wanted to make sure that h and grizzly 31 the 31 grain the uh, slug pellets actually fit in the gun because for some reason those pellets do not fit in the 125 they've got to be tapped in but this gun and the 105 they fit in the in the breech no problem and and they fire no problem Everybody says, everybody says, oh, 31 grains is too heavy for for a brake barrel. Well, why is it why is it too heavy? Your men, your other than the the JSB Predator GTO 16 grain or 16.75 grain, whatever they are, GTO lead free pellets in 25. That's the lightest pellet there is for this gun. And the lead pellets start at 19.91 grain and go up to 33.9. So you don't really have a whole big window there. Uh, it's like, I don't know, what's the difference? Almost 14 grains? That, that, that's nothing. And it's like I said, it's got pro no problems firing the 31 grain grizzlies. And I've done penetration tests with, with the other, with my 105. I did that last week, actually. And it was pushing... The Grizzlies through three quarter inch, through a three quarter inch piece of pine. I know pine's soft, but still, it's the the, the slug still went right through the, the wood, with no problem, and deformed. So the gun's got to have a little bit of power behind it if it can fire it. But anyway, that's the overview of the Hot Saw Model Ninety Five. I'm guessing this gun was probably made uh, nineteen. Not 19, what am I, in 2019. But I won't know until I get uh, the information back from Hot Song, if they even email me back, that is. Alright, we'll see you guys later.